Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 18. This is day seven. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And today we're going to uh, fool around with these beautiful uh, pieces. The uh, General's Chalk Pencils, the Micron 01, the pencil, and the white chalk. And all of these materials we go over in the introductory video because there's some new tools and new surfaces that we're playing with here. Okay, so uh, we're going to start out with gratitude, appreciation for this new paper. Uh, it's kind of wonderful for me because it brings back all my memories of working with real vellum uh, in my calligraphy of work. And um, this work, this paper is called vellum paper, but it's, it's not real vellum. Uh, real vellum is uh, animal skin. Anyway, we're going to be working with a technique from uh, Horace Hofnagel. And this is one of my favorite books in the world. It's just so beautiful. His illustrations. The, um, I can see where you get the, the are, bug. Oh, the bugs, yeah. yeah. Right. I think that's and where bijou. That's where I uh, really started liking the bugs, yeah. right? Look at that bijou. Oh, my God. Is that my Uncle Alphonse? Maybe. With, with a little yeah. uh, print, print on there. Mm, look at this. It's just unbelievably beautiful. So this is a great book to, uh, to look at. And one of the things that he did, brings out in this book is what the reason that we're showing it to you is that he inspired this idea of working on vellum paper. Well, what he did was working on both sides right. on one piece. So one piece of artwork would have uh, parts on both sides of the paper because you could, you could see through the vellum um, and you would draw your flowers or, or illustration or whatever, and you would make it look like it was pierced through the paper, which if in this particular case was totally impossible for that little thing. But anyway, we're going to do we're it. Gonna do it. <laughs> so we're going to start out, uh, we're going to be working with like a ribbon type thing just to get a feel for how this works. And with our pencil, we're going to draw a ribbon that's yeah, maybe, what, an inch and a half, Rick? Yeah. A, a little bit over an inch wide. And we're going to stop right there. And and do the same thing on the other side. Do so the same thing on so the other side. Which sort of laying down a, a, this is a version of a more deliberate string here, right. string and border. So you can see that I'm sort of measuring it off and uh, going in on the other side. This actually brings Hollabaugh to a whole new level. Right, right. right. So now we're going to uh, quote in quotation marks. We're going to cut this paper. And we're going to pretend like we're taking a, a knife to it and we're going to cut the paper so that the ribbon appears to be going through the paper to the back side and then out again. And um, I'm going to add these little details here and there just, just um, well, you're sort of cu cutting it a little bit wider than the ribbon. Right, so that you can get it through, right? right? So just very gentle on this. You don't want to go too hard, too dark, any of those things. This is just to kind of guide you along. This is such an amazing technique, and, and you're going to impress so many people with this. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to add some tangles to this beautiful ribbon. And of course, I couldn't I couldn't go that long without doing mucha. And we're going to use mucha as a texture tangle mm -hmm. or a background tangle or or all over. What do you call it? Te like a texture tangle, yeah, right? Yeah, texture, filling it in, like painting with mucha. Like if you're putting down a coat of mucha here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fill your brush really well and <laughs> don't clean it because I'm I'm really big on having some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> different colors coming in. And we, we're just going to fill up all that space with as much mucha as we can um, and using some techniques from some old manuscripts and how to keep keep the mucha interesting. Uh, and one of the things to just bring everybody's attention to this is we're doing mucha and you're going to see that mucha is all about the aura. So you do that initial shape. Right. And 
then you go back and aura it, and as it interacts with itself, it goes in a holobah shape, holobah fashion. This is, um, you know, you, you might want to just put your pen down and watch for a while and, and get the feeling of how we put the mukha together um, as a texture. Because what I want is I want it to have almost no white space that's any bigger than that. Uh, like a mukha head. Mukha stem or, or, or any part of the mukha. I don't want to um, have a lot of white space in there. So I'm doing this thing where I, I start at the top and do the, the, the top part of the mukha and then just finish it off so that it makes it look like it's right next to it. But it's, us, it's using the, the stroke from the, the, the one before it. One. So it's sharing, it's sharing its, uh, its identification there. This is a really cool technique. And once you get rolling on that, uh, you'll use it often because it can... Uh, you, by having done those mukas in the beginning, it gives us something to go behind. So it makes right. it interesting, uh, more complex than you would think. Uh, and and you can have those first ones go in any direction, and then just you know play with this technique of uh, of using aura and halaba. So again, now you, you're going up and and doing the top part, and then coming down with your stem. And just remembering that this is on like a ribbon, so it stays within that little border, at least on this one. I like to do these little kissing mukas where they 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 tend to move over and and go mm. really close to the other one, so that it defines some little spaces that you then fill with either more mukha or something else. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what you do in this. Right. So you can see how they're sort of kissing and touching and, um, and yeah. And yeah. where they don't, you just draw behind. So right. you always have that option, you know, knowing what, whatever you do, it, it's going to work out. Nice. Uh, they're so graceful and... And at first, you know, they're a little, they look a little wonky and wiggly. And, but once you put them all together, th it works. And it has a, a very natural look to it because it's not too perfect. Too perfect is overrated. You don't, wanna, you don't want it to look like it came off a of computer. That's the wrong thing. What's that little mushroom? Is it criminy <laughs> mushroom? Yeah, like a right? criminy. It yeah. does look like that, doesn't it? So I'm going to add some um, texture in here, some black and um, see where that takes us, just to, to add some drama. So this, this technique of filling the interstices, we do this a lot, in, uh, particularly in flux, but <laughs> it can be applied in so many tangles, and it gives that lovely like contrast. It it's just really brings it to life. OK, so we're going to just flip this over and do it on the other side. And it doesn't have to look like exactly the other side. It just has to kind of go with it and complement it, mm -hmm. right? So again, I'm going to do some bold ones and that, that, go, that float across so that we can go behind them. I love yeah. how that just arcs up with that lovely curve and then carefully auraing it back. Mm -hmm. And you can decide, like, oh, is it going to? Are they going to touch? Are they not going to touch? Are they going to overlap? Are they not going to overlap? And each one is going to be different. I have to remind myself to say things here because it's uh, I'm watching. I'm, right? <laughs> Rick and I do our voiceovers after we do the uh, drawing. And we're sitting here together watching watching this and doing like, uh, I feel like a football play-by-play, -play, right. <laughs> you know, uh, which which is very ironic because I know nothing about football, but I could talk forever on, on writing. Right. And um, uh, Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how this just kisses over there. 
So have fun with this, you know, just interact with the tile and see where you think they might grow and how they might like to grow together, where they might just propagate and come out and, and play with, okay, if they're drawing behind, where do they come out on the bottom and all these different places. So it's, it, we're calling this a ribbon, but it could be anything, you know, because it almost looks like they're growing out from under there, right? Mm -hmm. And this brings up another little interesting idea is that any tangle, just I think any tangle, can be used as a border. And we wouldn't normally think of mucha as a border tangle, but here it's doing exactly that on this ribbon. I actually use mucha as a border Often, but you use mooka on everything. I, I use so mooka on everything. It's <laughs> just my my go to, you know. And and everybody has their go to that they feel comfortable with. And when you can't think of what to what to draw, you can you can um, always just go there. But this is really interesting because it actually is growing from the middle out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see what we're going to do on the other side. We'll see how we deal with that. Right. right? Nice. How fun is that? I'm trying to, what, what does this remind me of? Something like a carved handle of a mm. sword hilt. Was yes. It, was that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Go yeah. with that. So we're going to uh, delineate this cut in the paper, this so-called cut, going carefully over that pencil line and uh, giving it a little bit of a, a opening there. You can see now how we just slid that mm -hmm. mooka right in there. And those cuts go both in the same direction. Right, because, like, yeah. If you remember looking at that in the book there, mm -hmm. it's very cool. Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Okay, so what are we going to do with this? We're going to uh, put our lines there just, just to keep our... Just sort of just restating keep us, it. Yeah, yeah. So now we're, we're on the other side. Right. So this would be where the ribbon is over here. Right. So let's set up that border or string. And we're sort of playing with the impossible, you know, the impossibilities in some ways here, but uh, that's, that's part of what we do here. Play with impossibilities. Okay, so we're going to put a, a, a few mooka fronds, and you, you're going to sort of have them kind of um, meeting up with this with the lines on the f on the front you can see that they won't all do that but enough of them just to give you that feeling so I'm going to do it that side ah take your time nice and it just gives that hint of connection there right right and I'm, I'm taking care of the edges right away, so you won't have to worry about that. And, and oh, yeah. Just that little touch. Cool. So you can see the direction this is going here. It's just going to be more mooka, and they connect. But even if they don't, they don't all have to connect. Just enough to give that, that idea that this is a continuous ribbon going through. So now we're going to play with that technique that we were doing before with you using the mooka coming from the top and then uh, using the, uh, the previous mooka for, mm -hmm. for the edge. And just imagining how, how they're growing there. Like you, you left them left them too long and they're all growing up and clustered and you come back and say, Wow, what'd you guys do? Just when I think you couldn't put one in there, you do. I know, right? So now, just like on the other side, we'll go in and fill those uh, interstices. 
this is such a great concept. I love this. And I'm, I love being able to share it with everybody, um, teaching you to do something just unexpected. And this paper just begs for it, right? Right. And we love the idea of this opening up ideas that we wouldn't have thought of otherwise because the whole concept of being able to work a, a, a piece of art that is translucent mm -hmm. and the, the possibilities and the potential is very exciting. So here we go with that. Re redefining that line, the, the cut line. Once you get used to doing this, you probably wouldn't have to go in with pencil again. You, you know, the, the coming from the other side would be enough. Mm. But I just wanted you to uh, be aware of what we were doing. Nice. Ah. So we're going back to the front, and we're going to add some color. And I, I have uh, an orange and a, what was the other one? It's like a purple? I can't remember now. But this is fascinating because you're using so much orange, and orange is not your uh, not, favorite color. <laughs> not my favorite color, but they these these mugas seem to like it. Yeah, yeah. and we're working with uh, what was in the, the project packs that yeah. we opened. So yeah, I think Molly handed me this one on purpose just to see <laughs> to 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 challenge me. Molly loves orange. Yeah, she is such an orange person. You would think that mother and daughter would have some. We're we're totally opposite in our styles and our, um, and and I and I think that's just the, an artist's way, right? You know? And that's part of what's so nice about having, you know, different people showing different ways of doing this. Is you realize, like, well, each of us, you know, Molly, Martha, Maria, Julie, me, all of us do it a little bit differently. So that means you can do it a little bit differently as well. But it also gives you, you're learning from different people. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, it's like you want to learn from different chefs because they all have different right. spices that they use or one likes spicy food, the other one doesn't, or one likes fish, the other one doesn't. So yeah. you get a, a more overall uh, no, uh, education. Right, learn more possibilities. Going in to uh, give the, the ribbon itself some... Uh, texture here on the edges. So it's like you can shade the individual elements within a tangle or you can shade the, the area within which the tangle is, but the string defines it. So where the little cut marks were, are you going to put give that uh, a nice solid uh, darkening there so it, it's shaded going in going mm -hmm. underneath there one of the neat things about this surface and the graphite and the uh, chalk is the the way that it blends oh the totion loves this paper it, yeah, yeah. and yeah. it just really you can get a really subtle gradation and the paper's very strong, so uh, unlike right. some of the handmade papers that we use, you can be, be more aggressive with the tortillon than, mm -hmm. than uh, on the others. Uh, and it's and, very smooth. And you can see she's using the very side of the tortillon, so that, that's going to keep it living longer. Right. So we're going to add a little bit of uh, graphite where the the cut mark is going, you know, forcing the paper to come out towards you, you know, to have it some three-dimensionality. And we, we're doing that by uh, just giving it a little lift on one side, a little shading. And softly, you know, get it, you can see it. Wow, it's, yeah. three, it's 3D, all of a sudden yeah. 3D. How cool is that? And then just with the graphite that was on the right. tortillon, added a little on the other side. So you don't want to put shading on both sides of this particular piece. It's, it's kind of defined as, you know, where your light source is. Look at that. You can see, you're, right? you're, you're seeing right through the paper, right? right? How fun is that? Look at that. How cool. <laughs> Very cool. See, now we're, again, where we mark the, the cut marks, go in and shade there. 
right? So and you, that's, that's going really under. going under. You can see it yeah. going under. That's that's what you want. How how pretty is that, right? It's like alive. Like a little bit on the edges. <clears throat> and bring in your graphite tortillon. As we joke, they all become graphite tortillons mm -hmm. sooner or later. So this is funny, though. Um, on the top of the ribbon, the, the mukas are going one way. The bottom, they're going mm. the other way. In the middle, they go both. <laughs> hey, it's a special ribbon. It's, it's, a, it's an animation, and it's like a superpower. I, I right? can get, to get them to grow all different ways. <laughs> Magic uh, muka. Love that. Right? How cool. Very sweet. So this was another iteration, you know, when we're when we're trying things out, and this was one of the first ones. So I don't know if you can notice that Maria like accentuated the ribbon at the edges of the paper there. Right, right. She trimmed it out with a cuticle scissors. Yeah, yeah. I always have them because I sometimes I do my nails at my desk, and oh, sometimes geez. I they would tangle. <laughs> <laughs> I always have the little scissors. Oh, and then look at this. It's as if I took the the, uh, the ribbon and folded it over so it wouldn't <laughs> and the ribbon itself is translucent that's right isn't that that is the, the coolest thing right <laughs> oh, we're, we're guys, so easily yeah. amused i know right oh um, so hopefully this gives you some uh ideas and inspiration of what ways you can play with this <laughs> yeah i don't know that was a, sort of an afterthought right and the subtle shading, you can tell it's just with the graphite on the tortillon. Oh, I, I just started doing some other things with ribbons going in all different directions. And this muka was uh, going in a totally different right. directions. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And and you can see where I cut the cut the sides. See yeah. where I cut the and sides like where, the, where the where the where the uh, black and white ribbons yeah. going. See it? How fun! Well, <laughs> I hope. Everybody has as much fun with this as <laughs> we obviously have I had. I know, I know. And uh, show us what you have, and we will see yeah, you. Yeah, I'd love to see it on the app, right? Yeah, yeah. See you soon. Okay, see bye. you later. Bye now. Bye.